Hello and welcome to today's video. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Summer Hobart. And in this video, I'm very excited because I'm going to be sharing with you literally step-by-step -step full tutorial on Google ads for Amazon sellers specifically. Now, I already have a video about this on YouTube that some of you may have already seen. This is the updated version. So there is going to be a lot of overlap, but there are some key points and key updates that I've made to my strategy uh, over time that I want to share in this video. So this is up to date. Um, this is my personal strategy that I have had success with, measurable success with. So it's not just a theory. Um, this, this really works. and I'm really excited to share. There's a lot, as you can see from the total uh, minutes of this video, there's going to be a lot of content I'm going to run through as quickly as possible. If there's anything that you have questions about or need more kind of clarification on, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe because I have a lot more tutorials just like this coming very, very soon. So without further ado, let's get into profitable Google ads for Amazon sellers. So why Google ads for Amazon? Uh, and by the way, yes, you can run Google ads for Amazon and I'll cover that in a second. But number one, and a lot of Amazon sellers don't know this, but 46% of product searches actually begin on Google. Okay. A huge percentage begin on Amazon. Amazon's a great opportunity, but there's a huge, if you're not on Google, whether that's through SEO with your articles or with your website, right. Or with Google ads, uh, you're really missing out. So this is a really great way to capture other buyers that you're not currently targeting. Okay. So 46% of product searches begin on Google. There are people on Google who want to buy something. It's not just people wanting to watch videos or look at articles or whatever. Uh, there are a huge percentage of people on Google who want to actually buy. So what we are going to do is find those people and bring them to our Amazon listing through what's called Google search ads. Okay. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, Amazon loves external traffic. Amazon loves to steal traffic from other sources, whether that's Google, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, F Facebook, whatever it might be. Amazon loves external traffic, which can really help you, especially if you're ranking your products or maintaining or increasing rank. Um, or keyword rank for your existing products on Amazon that have already been launched. And then reason number three is when you sign up for Google, there's a good chance that you will actually get a free ad credit. So you basically get, you spend, for example, hundred dollars, you get hundred dollars in ad credit. Okay. So basically you can get results for half the price. If you think about it, uh, when you add in that kind of promo. So that's another really great option to get started on Google. Uh, a lot of really other great things as well, but these are really the top three reasons to use Google ads for Amazon sellers. And specifically, I'm going to be covering Google search ads in this video and my strategy using Google search ads. Keep in mind that Google is a platform that you can use in a huge multitude of ways. This is only one of many, many, many strategies, but this is a simple, effective, um, and proven strategy that has worked for me. And I'm excited to share it with you. And again, we're going to be using Google search ads, which uh, looks something like this. So for example, let's say you're looking for a stainless steel taco holder on Google. You type it in. And then you see uh, these top uh, search results here. You can see ad kind of on the left corner there. These are obviously ads, right? These are specifically Google search ads. They're just text, fairly easy to set up. And I'm going to give you some strategies and hacks to really help you uh, stand out and get better results from your Google search ads than if you were going to try this on your own. Um, and you can see actually one of the examples right here goes directly to Amazon, which is what we're going to do. Uh, a lot of people have questions about Google shopping ads. You cannot currently run Google shopping ads for your Amazon listings. If you have a website, for example, a Shopify website, you are able to, uh, both Amazon, at least right now you can't, uh, if that changes in the future, you can be sure I'll be testing that, making a video But right now, Google search ads, fairly easy and effective to set up. And I'll show you how. So, uh, before we get into it, last thing, do these actually work? Do Google search ads, do Google ads actually work? Well, here's a screenshot that I've just taken for one of my clients. Now, these are Google ads that I'm running to my client's website because they went out of stock on Amazon. So we kind of shifted over and started advertising on their website. And one of the benefits of, of Google ads to your website is that you can track purchases and sales. Where on Amazon, it's a little bit more difficult. It's not impossible like a lot of people think, but it's a little bit more difficult to track your exact results, especially keyword by keyword. But I'm going to give you some hacks at the very end of this video on how to track your results. Um, but here's some results. Uh, that we generated for one of my clients uh, for their website. So do Google ads work? 100% absolutely. There are so many people on Google wanting to buy your products that have no idea. And we're going to go and capture them and bring them to your Amazon listing. And you can use this strategy either to launch your brand new product on Amazon or as an ongoing strategy to either maintain rank for some of your, your main keywords or to increase rank for your main keywords or other keywords that you want to increase rank for and kind of gain market share. Okay. So launch ongoing. Uh, however you want to use this, it's really up to you, but it's not just for one or the other. You can use it for both. Okay. You just might need to adjust it a little bit, which I'll talk about in a second. 
with this specific strategy, again, very, very simple and very effective. We are going to create Google. Someone's going to type in keywords under Google that relate to our product, right? They're basically searching for our product on Google. We're going to find those people and drag them and bring them to our Amazon listing uh, using Google search ads. So it's essentially creating Google search ads and directing it right to our Amazon listing. One of the benefits of going directly to our Amazon listing is that Amazon has extremely high domain authority, which is ultimately going to help the performance of our ads. Um, and there's a high trust element there to where sending customers to your Amazon listing versus your website, people are much more likely to buy the exact same product on Amazon than your website because there's a lot more trust built in the platform. Amazon also spends billions or millions or billions of dollars uh, optimizing their platform to, to squeeze as many sales out as possible, which ultimately benefits you as well. So a lot of benefits here. Um, but I also really quickly want to make clear that this is one of many strategies that you can use. I know of other Amazon sellers who will, they're running Google uh, search ads or just Google ads in general and sending those ads to a landing page, just a one page website where, for example, they offer some kind of promo code in return for a visitor's email. So basically the visitor gives, you know, they click on your ad, they get to a landing page, they give you their email in return for a promo code. And then at that point, via email and on the landing page, you send them to your um, Amazon listing. So you can either go Google ads direct to Amazon, or you can have kind of an intermediary of a landing page. Again, this video is already long enough. Um, you can kind of add the complexity if you want, but this strategy works. And that's what I kind of want to highlight. Um, but both strategies can work. The benefit with the landing page is that you can pixel the landing page and uh, tag the landing page for retargeting. You can also build your email list that way. So that can be really, really effective. Uh, but again, the landing page doesn't have the same domain authority and adding that extra step could actually reduce people, uh, the, the purchases that you can ultimately make. But again, there's kind of those two uh, big strategies there that I see a lot of Amazon sellers doing. Both can be extremely effective, uh, but I'm going to be focusing on this for this video, but want to kind of make you aware of both. Okay. So moving forward, let's assume you want to get started, right? Finally. All right. To get started, first you need to set up your Google ads account. If you haven't already, just go to Google ads. Um, I'll have a link to the, to Google ads specifically in the description below, uh, as well as links to everything else I mentioned here. So just go to the description section. If you have questions, if you're missing anything, let me know in the comments, but go to Google ads, uh, to the website, as you can see right here, click on start now. Uh, and then you'll create your account. They'll ask you for some of your business info uh, and pretty easy to get set up, pretty self-explanatory as well. Once you create your account, um, you may even get a free ad credit. What you're going to do is go to the top left corner and click on new campaign. You're gonna create a brand new campaign. For your objective, you're gonna select website traffic and then continue. Uh, for the campaign type, you have all these options. Video is for YouTube ads, you have Google Shopping, Display, Discovery. For this specifically, and for Amazon, you want to click search, which is the top option right there. So search, then continue. Then uh, Google's going to ask you for your uh, URL. In this case, you can just enter your um, Amazon listing URL, or if you have an Amazon storefront, you can do that. Really doesn't matter as much. This is mainly for, because we're going to change the URL later. This is just for uh, Google to generate some keyword ideas for you to target. So not a big deal. Next, you're going to name your campaign. You can name it whatever you want uh, to keep it simple. You could just have something like your product name dash, you know, launch or whatever your objective is, right? If, if this is, you know, your only campaign, it really doesn't matter as much. When you start getting a lot more campaigns um, and, and targeting, then naming conventions become much more important. But this is personally for you. The customer won't, or the, the visitor, the your customer won't see this. It's just for your organization purposes. Next, you want to make sure you uncheck the search network and display network. That's my personal recommendation, what I personally do for my ads. Um, so the search network are basically uh, partners with Google. So like I, I believe CNN is an example of this, that they're officially like a Google partner to where if you clicked on search network, um, now your ads are eligible to show up on other kind of websites or search engines that behave like Google, but are much smaller. For example, like CNN or other kind of niche or news websites where people can search in the search bar. I want my ads to only show up on google.com because uh, that's where I get, the, that's where historically I've, I've received the best results um, for myself and for my clients. So I'd recommend unchecking these, but if you want some additional maybe exposure or for whatever reason, you can check the search network. Uh, but I definitely do recommend in no case, selecting the displayed network, leave that unchecked. Okay. And then we'll move into the next step, which is choosing your country and language. So if you're selling in the United States, you want to make sure that you only select the United States it goes for any country that you're selling in. And then for language, whatever language uh, that your advertisement is going to be in. Cause again, this is a Google text ad, uh, the language is very, very important. So in this case, the United States, it's going to be in English. So I select English pretty straightforward. Next, we're going to, 
you're going to set your daily maximum budget and your bidding strategy for your budget. This is completely up to you, but just a little tip is what I like to do is I like to have a certain launch budget, quote unquote, for new products that I'm launching because I, I like to use Google ads pretty heavily for my uh, launch budget. And many of you are watching this specifically for product launches. So I have my total launch budget. Let's say it's like a thousand dollars and then I'm going to spend, you know, 30% of that or 33% of that toward, um, Google ads, a third toward Pinterest ads and a third toward Amazon ads. Okay. Let's just say that. Um, so then I kind of divide that out and let's say my launch, I want to last it a month. So I take, you know, $333 divided by 30 days, right? So 10, $11 a day. Um, this is your, this is a way of kind of figuring out your max uh, budget. It's whatever you want it to be. And keep in mind, this is not the amount that you will spend on Google per day. This is the maximum that you will spend on Google um, every day or per day. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's not this actual spend. It's the maximum you're willing to spend, which you could very well reach. And there's times where Google will actually go above and below um, to ultimately average out at that point. But with this strategy, um, you may not reach your limit every time because we're going to be, it'll make more sense later when we get into keyword targeting, which I'll talk about in a second, but not as big a deal. Just set whatever the maximum you're willing to spend on launch is. Then for your bidding strategy, I recommend selecting manual cost per click. This is going to give you the most control over bidding. So you can set specific bids for each keyword um, that gives you more control. Again, we'll, it, it'll make more sense when we get into the keyword targeting section. So once you select your budget and your bidding strategy, um, Google will, you have the option to add site link extensions, call out extensions and other extensions. And just to kind of make it very simple about what extensions are, these are examples of site link extensions, which we're going to add next. Really the biggest benefit of site link extensions is that they um, ultimately increase your ad visibility, right? So there's, if you don't have any site link extensions, just imagine, I can't say the word, uh, just imagine this Google ad without these, you know, Nike new releases, without the custom Nike shoes, without this kind of text block down here with the four different um, site links down there, it's much smaller and it commands less space on the page. Um, with site links, you can actually, number one, increase your visibility of the Google ad. And then number two, it can also uh, ultimately increase your likelihood of people clicking. It's more opportunity to convince people to, to click on your ad um, and, and convince people to ultimately, you know, click on your ad and hopefully purchase your product. So you definitely want to include site link extensions, also call out extensions and potentially promotion extensions. Those are the top three that I use. So, uh, so these are site links. What you want to do is, and this is true of if you're copywriting for your Amazon listing, if you're creating ads for your Amazon listing, whatever it is, think about your Amazon customer, put yourself in their position. They're on Google. They're searching for your product type. What, Features and benefits are going to get them to click on your ad and ultimately buy. What do they care about, right? So think about the features and benefits that your customers care about, write down a list, and then those that list can become your site link extensions. I recommend at least four, but you can have more than four as well. Um, and, and Google will kind of cycle through and find the best performing site links, but um, definitely strive to get four, which is really not that difficult to do. I've included just a few examples here. Again, completely depends on your product. There's not one kind of size fits all solution. And here's just some examples, right? For maybe a soap mold that I'm selling, superior quality, breathtaking designs, money back promise or money back guarantee, two day shipping, right? Super fast shipping, things like that, right? So, so think about the features, by the way, and features are what your product does. Benefits are what your product does for your customer. So example of a feature would be two day shipping. Your product is shipped within two days. That's what the, it's about the product where breathtaking designs is more about your customer or maybe, you know, um, you know, stunning designs in under a minute. Okay. That's for your customer, right? It's kind of related to your product, but it's, it's what your product does for your customer. So benefits, what your product does for your customer features, what your product does or aspects about your product that are important. And you want to use a mix of both. And we'll talk more about this when we actually create the copy for our ad. So that's what you, that's kind of a way, a simple strategy that you can use for your site look extensions. What you'll do is you'll just enter in some text and you have a certain character limit. I think it's 25 characters or 30. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, you'll enter in the text here, very simple, like superior quality, and then you'll just include a link to your Amazon listing. Okay. So it's a, it's a short text and a link to your listing. Um, and then it'll ultimately look like this pretty straightforward. And if you have more questions, uh, let me know. So that's site link extensions, and you're going to repeat almost the exact same process to create call out extensions. So you saw the site link ex extension example. These are call out extensions kind of highlighted here uh, in the red box. Again, these add, it's a little bit more opportunity to sell to visitors or to, to ultimately potential customers. And it kind of adds a little bit more depth to your Google ads to kind of give it more space. 
And basically, it's kind of like if a, if a grocery store or a retail store gave you, you know, a certain amount of space or allocated a certain amount of space and you only use half, you want to use 100% of the space that you're given. So same thing with, with digital kind of retail space with Google Ads. You want to use as much of the space that they're giving you, right? The more space that you use, the more opportunities that you have to convince someone to click on your ad and ultimately buy and commands more space, if that makes sense. So call out extensions, same idea, features and benefits. What matters to your customer? Your customer's on Google. They're searching for product options. What is going to get them to click on yours? What makes you different? What makes you special? What do you do for them that nobody else does, right? These are some really good examples um, So uh, or good ideas. So implement those pretty much the exact same process. And then lastly, uh, you can create promotion extensions. This is especially great if you are running product launches. So if you're running a product launch and let's say you're doing something like 15, 20, 25% off of your product, then I would definitely recommend using a promotion extension. Uh, this is basically, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. It's an extension to your ad that gives more detail about specific promotions. So you can give a money off uh, option, a percent discount, you know, uh, you get this percent off when you spend this amount, right? There's a lot of different options, but usually I use a percent discount anywhere from 10 to 25%, depending on my goals, or it could be more, but usually I, I never go above 25% or I never have. Um, and then uh, you enter in your item name there, which in this case, for this example, we're gonna use soap molds. And then your final URL um, here, you can either, which we'll talk about later, you can use a ranking URL, which we'll again, talk about in a second, or you can use just a straight URL to your Amazon listing. Um, and then for promotional details, what you can do, and I have videos about this on YouTube if you're um, curious and, and wanna know how to create a, a promo code that you can use in social media and Google ads, but you can create a promo code, for example, uh, you know, so, Sumner 15, let's say it's Hobart 15, okay? So for promotional details, you would have, you know, promo code, select promo code, and then have um, uh, your, your promo code in there. Or another option that you can do, there's a lot of ways you can do this, is on your listing itself, you could have 15, 20, 25% off on the listing itself, and just mention it in the promotion extension that you have the percent off, and the, the, the Google shopper won't know the difference of that the fact that you're already kind of offering that percent off to everyone who comes to your Amazon listing, they'll think it's unique. And really, it doesn't matter. It's not deceptive at all because you advertise, hey, it's 15% off, for example. Then you have a 15% off coupon on your listing. That's what they wanted. Okay, so you have a coupon on your listing or you can have a promo code and include the promo code here. Either way can work really well. So it's really up to you. Um, but really, really great, especially during product launches. And I like to generally have a promo code in my ads because that really helps increase the click-through rate of my advertising and ultimately my overall results. So I like to use some kind of even a small discount like 10% off can really, you know, make my ad stand out and, and get a lot better performance uh, and a lot higher performance score compared to other advertisers that aren't offering anything and get a lot more clicks. Okay, so again, promo extension, pretty self-explanatory. You just fill in the data there with whatever your promotion wants to be. Next, Google will ask you to set up your ad groups. So we're now in the ad group section. What we just covered up to this point is the campaign section. So we have campaign section. Now the ad group section, you can either have one ad group or multiple ad groups, which I'll explain later, depending on the keywords that you're targeting. But basically in the ad group section, you're telling Google what keywords you want your ad to appear for. Meaning, all right, Google, when someone types in the word, for example, uh, pink soap mold, I want my Google ad to show up for that search query. Okay, so you're matching a user's, a Google user's search query to your ad, and basically you only wanna show up for very, very specific searches. So this section is extremely important. This is the keyword targeting section, uh, very, very important. And ultimately what you wanna do is, is identify hundreds to even thousands of keywords, okay? Very, very specific, relevant keywords to your Amazon product and only target those. So for example, if I'm selling a soap mold or a soap maker on Amazon, and someone types in Rio de Janeiro into Google, I do not want to show up for that. It's not relevant whatsoever. Also, if someone types in the word soap dispenser into, into Google, I don't want my ad to show up either because they're looking for a soap dispenser, not a soap maker. So you got to really get in the mindset of um, you only want to target keywords or really you only want to target search queries that are extremely, extremely specific to your product and only your product, okay? And also you want to target purchase uh, keywords that, that indicate purchase intent. So if someone types in, uh, for example, pink soap mold reviews, they're not looking to buy a pink soap mold. They're looking for reviews. So they're still in kind of the search process um, and they're not really ready to buy. So we want to target very, very specific um, keywords to our product and keywords that have purchase intent. 
here are some examples right here. So flower soap maker, pink soap maker, soap maker Amazon, soap maker flower, etc. Right, and you can get literally. I'm gonna show you how to generate literally hundreds to potentially thousands of keywords that you can target. Okay, with this, and that's the key because any of these keywords on their own, um, with the strategy that we're gonna lay out, may not get a ton of sales on their own, but in with the law of averages, and when you aggregate all of these together, you can actually get some pretty impressive results. Okay, so again, I, I can't stress this enough. I know I'm repeating myself. But you want to be extremely, extremely specific with your keywords. And then uh, last point I want to make is um, Google will request you to set a default bid. I like my bids for this strategy to be somewhere between 20 cents to 35 cents. Usually that's the range for my products, for my strategy. But again, you need to think about what makes sense for you. But just as kind of a baseline, that's what I use and get really great results with that, with the strategy that I'm using and my product categories. Uh, but I want to give you something instead of just saying, you know, come up with it on your own. So that's what I set for my bid, and then I'll show you um, the keywords to target. And the last thing with these keywords here, you see that there's, you know, for for example, flower soap mold, flower soap maker. There's a bracket before and after the the keyword. Okay. Um, if you look at the very bottom of the screenshot, you see match types help control which searches can trigger your ads. All right. You want to target exact match, or that's what I would recommend. What that means is when someone types in flower soap maker onto Google, I want that's the only time I want my ad to show up, right? Is when someone types in flower soap maker or pink soap maker or soap maker Amazon, soap maker flower, etc. Okay, that's all exact match means. And in order to do that, you're gonna put brackets before and after all the keywords that you're targeting. If you don't put brackets before and after the keywords that you're targeting, you're entering keywords as what's called broad match, which just means that you're gonna show up for loosely related keywords. So for example, if I target, you know, uh, soap mold, for example, if I target soap maker in um, exact match, then, I'm, then when someone types in soap maker into Google, my ad can show up and only that time. Where if I target it in broad match where I don't have the brackets before and after the keyword, that means I can show up for terms like maybe, you know, soap dispenser or soap making kit, not soap maker or, or soap mold, but, you know, soap mold kit or soap making kit, right, that are somewhat related, but they're not looking for my product specifically. They're looking for another type of product. So what happens is you may get more clicks um, and higher, you know, you, you may get more clicks to your listing, but you will ultimately generate less sales because it's less specific. The key here is be very, very targeted, very, very specific. So um, again, the keywords that you're targeting are going to be very specific and you want to make sure it's an exact match. That's why I would recommend to you. So finding the keywords to target with your Google ads can be number one, completely free and honestly, relatively simple. So what you want to do is target long tail keywords. That's the biggest key or one of the biggest keys with this strategy. And just as a, I have a whole article in my Facebook group about long tail keywords and a really in-depth step-by-step process of how I identify long tail keywords for my Google ads, for my Amazon ads, for my Pinterest ads, for a lot of my keyword based um, advertising. Um, so you can go ahead and join our Facebook group. Link to the Facebook group will also be in the description section if you want to see that article. But just as a brief refresher, basically the longer a keyword is, the less competitive it generally is. Okay. So the longer a keyword is, the more specific it is. The more specific a keyword is means there's less options. So for example, think about um, soap mold on Amazon, right? And how many options of soap mold there are on Amazon. Now think about how many, the number of pink soap molds on Amazon. There's a lot less, right? It's, it's a lot. If you're selling a pink soap mold, you should be targeting pink soap mold, not just soap mold because there are fewer competitors, which means uh, you can actually get more profitable results. And because it's more specific, your conversion rate can actually be much higher as well. Okay. So this strategy of identifying long tail keywords, again, long tail keywords are just long keywords. They're keyword phrases that consist of three, four or more words. So, so for example, pink soap mold, that's a long tail keyword. A shorter tail keyword would be soap mold. Okay. Soap mold, a lot more competitive. Pink soap mold, a lot less competitive and can have a higher conversion rate. Right. Um, and you may be thinking, oh, well, Sumner, there's a lot more people typing in soap mold than pink soap mold. That is true, but like I said before, we're gonna target hundreds to thousands of keywords, and it's absolutely doable, depending on your product and, and, and how much time you wanna spend into this, but you can absolutely, uh, it's absolutely doable. And when we have so many keywords, even though they may have very low monthly searches, they all add up. Because even if you get like one sale a year, for example, if you have hundreds of keywords, that can really add up every day or every month, okay? And I would definitely recommend doing this, especially with this strategy, you wanna target long tail keywords over shorter tail keywords. That would be my recommendation. So longer very specific keywords that's it it's really that simple so longer more specific keywords and you can use a tool like papayasearch.com so you can go to papayasearch type that into google 
Um, and this is, you'll get to this page right over here. And I'll have a link to this in the description below as well. So with Papaya Search, what you can do is basically try to think of all the different ways that describe your product, really, really specific ways of describing your product. And you're gonna break that out into three or maybe even four sections. But you can break it out into three sections. And as we can see here, again, let's say we're selling a soap mold on Amazon. And let's say these are all words that describe our soap mold. It's pink, it's made of silicone, it's a flower design, it's small, it's square, it's chemical free. I know obviously the flower and square contradict each other, but let's just say, you know, these all in theory uh, represent our um, product, right? And, and you can just keep going on and on and on. Just think about all the words that, just, that specifically decide, describe your product. And in the next two, um, you'll enter keywords that specifically, des that specifically uh, describe what your product is. So the first is kind of characteristics of your product. The next is what your product is. So again, you can use this as an example. It sounds kind of complicated, but it's really simple. It's just like this. Um, so you have pink soap mold, pink soap maker, silicone soap mold, silicone soap maker, and so on. Okay, so you enter your group one, two, and three. Select, uh, as you can see on the kind of the bottom uh, uh, right there, select the exact option and then hit the submit button. And what Papaya Search or other tools like this are gonna do is they're gonna come up with all of the different uh, keyword combinations and create this basically just really quickly generate this huge list of long tail, highly specific keywords to your Amazon product. Okay, and that's the key. And again, when you're generating this list, you wanna target uh, you know, purchase intent keywords only and longer tail keywords only, okay? I can't stress that enough. Uh, so pretty straightforward, long tail keywords, very, very specific to your product. The more keywords that you enter, the more uh, ultimately long tail keywords on your list that you'll generate. So the more time you spend, the, the bigger your list will be and the more uh, opportunities you have kind of at bat, you know, of, of getting sales with searches on Google. So I think I covered that in enough depth. Again, full article in my Facebook group if you still have questions. If you have any other kind of quick questions, let me know in the comments below. But that's kind of uh, how you'll create your ad groups. So, so for example, let's say I generate a whole list of long tail keywords for soap mold. So we have pink soap mold, silicone soap mold, flower soap mold, etc. So I would create an ad group for my soap mold keywords, my really my long tail soap mold keywords. And then I could have another ad group and create a second ad group for my soap maker keywords. So pink soap maker, silicone soap maker, flower soap maker, etc. So you can have one ad group or you can have multiple ad groups. Uh, I recommend having multiple ad groups and kind of breaking it out. That's a little bit more kind of taking it another step further that can really improve your results. But if you want to keep it simple, you could have everything in one ad group, but try to think about the, the type, the keyword type and have an ad group for each keyword type. So in this case, soap mold would be one ad group, soap maker would be another ad group, and then you put all of your long tail keywords in exact match type uh, and target it that way. Again, exact match type, you wanna just make sure you have a bracket before and after each keyword. If you're using this tool, Papaya Search will do this automatically for you, okay? So that pretty much covers keyword. Again, probably one of the most important uh, points, which is why I spent so much time on it, and let's go ahead and breeze through the rest of this. So, once you create, so we went through campaign, we went through the ad group section. Now we're in the last and final section, creating your actual ad. This is what customers, when they type in those keywords that you're targeting, this is what they're going to see potentially when they type in those keywords into Google and, and see your ad, okay? So the first thing uh, Google's gonna ask of you is to insert your final URL. This is the ultimate URL that you want to send customers. So when they click on your ad, where are they going? And you wanna send them to your Amazon listing. And what I would recommend considering is using a ranking URL here. What I mean by ranking URL is a specific type of URL that helps you rank for a specific keyword. Some options include uh, pixify.me, Helium 10 Gems, Seller Tools Jenny. So these are some different options. The last two are free. Pixify Me, I think they have like a one day, 30 day trial. Um, I'm using Pixify Me for, and I'm by the way, actually using Google Ads to launch three brand new listings within the next two weeks, which I'm really excited about. And I'll be using pixify.me. Uh, I'll be having a full recap of my Google Ad results and i'm also using pinterest ads and amazon ppc full results video case study everything will be here on the channel so be sure to subscribe for that and like i said i'm going to be using pixify.me for that specifically at least that's the plan um but again this is just simply a url that takes someone uh to your amazon listing but it helps you rank and if you need more clarification on that i have a, again a whole article in my facebook group about that uh let me know in the comments i can give you more detail but uh pretty straightforward i think most people watching this already know what it is you can go ahead and check out these options as well. Again, Pixel Buy Me is paid, but the other two are free. So that's what I would recommend. 
This is going to help you that every time someone clicks on your Google ad, it's going to help you increase keyword rank for very, very specific keywords. So whether you're launching a product on Amazon or you're trying to maintain rank or increase rank for existing keywords on Amazon, um, this is a really great option for you. Uh, definitely a key here. I definitely recommend it at least as of right now. And if anything changes in the future, I will let you know. So that's what you use for your URL. So now we'll create the first headline of our Google ad. So the first headline is the most important section of your entire Google ad. It's what's going to get the most visibility and it's going to have the biggest determinant on people actually clicking on your ad. So for the first headline of your Google ad, I highly recommend using um, your user search query as a keyword in your headline. What does that mean? If someone is typing in soap mold into Google, you want to make sure that you have the word soap mold in your first headline. Okay, you want to always, 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 this is very important as well, um, match the user's query to your um, Google ad. That is going to significantly improve performance versus not doing this. So it's extremely important. You want to make sure that somewhere in your headline that you have this. And I highly recommend that in the, your headline one, you include your user's search query. So for example, like I said before, maybe we have two ad groups. We have an ad group for soap mold and an ad group for soap maker. So for ad group one, I'm going to have ads that relate to my first ad group and I'm going to have separate ads for my second ad group. So for my first ad group for soap mold, I want to make sure that I have the word soap mold in my first headline, right? And then for my other ad group, for the ads that I create for that ad group, I want to have soap maker in my headline. And that's another reason why you want to kind of break out your ad groups by keyword type uh, because then you can kind of create separate ads and that's ultimately going to improve performance. And here's another little hack. So like I said before, I like to have a coupon code. Uh, a lot of times, especially when I'm launching for my Google ads to improve performance uh, and ultimately sales. So what I'll do in this case is I would have something like 15% off soap mold. So you could either just for your headline, just write 15% off soap mold and that's it. Or to take it a step further and it's, it might be a little bit complicated. So you don't have to stress yourself out, but it's actually really simple is what you can do is in this case, right? Is write 15% off in your headline and then bracket like I have here. Bracket and what's going to happen when you when you have a when you include that bracket is you're going to get this little pop down, okay? And in the pop down, write your main keyword. So in this case, soap mold, and then select title case exactly like I have here. You can pause the video and look uh, just so it's not so complicated. So 15% off, then bracket, then you get a pop down. Enter in your main keyword in title case, and then hit apply. And then your headline. So basically, your headline will go from 15% off soap mold to 15% off bracket, keyword, dot, dot, soap mold, and bracket. Looks kind of complicated, but it's really simple. What this does, this little hack does, is that um, whatever someone types into Google, Google will swap out the word soap mold for the, for the search query that the, that the Google user is searching. So for example, let's say someone types in soap maker. Well, then what happens with your headline is it, it goes from 15% off soap mold to 15% off soap maker because the person on Google, right, uh, entered in the, the specific word soap maker. So instead of soap mold, Google switches out to soap maker, which again, the more relevant your uh, Google ad is to the, to the user search, the higher likelihood of clicks. So this is basically a dynamic feature that will just kind of slightly change your ad a little bit and slightly change your ad headline to be more relevant to the user search query. And what does that do? That ultimately generates more clicks and ultimately results um, you, but you want to make sure that you're doing it in the right way. Uh, and that's why you want to be very, very specific with your keywords. You want to break out your ad groups into different um, kind of keyword types, like I kind of mentioned. And it can be really, really simple. It's not that difficult. So again, um, entering the brackets here, basically what Google will do is um, they'll swap out the keyword depending on what the user types into Google. So soap if they type in soap mold, then it could leave it as soap mold. So it's 15% off soap mold. If they type in soap maker, then it's 15% off soap maker potentially. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of a way of simplifying it. I could go into more depth, but trying to keep it simple. And that's really complicated. You really don't have to do this. I just want to kind of share that little hack that I use that really improves my performance. So that's headline one. The other two will be a little bit easier. But again, headline, the first headline is the most important section of your entire Google ad. Then you'll have an option for two more headlines. So you have headline one, two, and three. We just covered number one. So for headline number two and three, again, go back to your list that you already wrote down of the top features and benefits. Why do people buy your product? What does it do that no other product does? What does it do for your customer that is so special to your customer that maybe is different or that is extremely powerful that could persuade someone to click on your ad? So think of, again, a list of features and benefits of your product. Go to your list and wh whichever you believe are the most powerful, go ahead and insert them in headline two and three. So here's an example, right? Two-day shipping. 
that's a huge differentiator for me, right? Maybe all my other competitors or all the other Google ads that I'm seeing are to someone's website, right? But they're not to Amazon. With Amazon, I have two-day shipping. That's going to help me stand out, and that's, help, uh, that's something that's really important to the customer, so I'm going to include that right in my headline, okay? Uh, and then you can see in headline number two, this is a benefit. So stunning soap in under a minute. Let's say that, you know, people want beautiful soap creations in a short period of time. Well, our soap ma maker or soap mold creates stunning soap in under a minute, right? Really powerful uh, benefit, right? Because that's a benefit to the customer, where two-day shipping is a feature. It describes the product. Still kind of a benefit because it's, you know, fast, you know, get it in two days would be, a, or two-day shipping, right? Um, but that's kind of more of a feature. So there's an example of the benefit in headline two. Uh, of a feature in headline number three. And um, ultimately, what I recommend is that you can have multiple ads per ad group. So you can either stick with one, but I'd recommend having at least two. And what you can do is for your first ad, so have kind of that, um, your first headline will be, you know, very, very specific to the user search query. For example, it could be 15% off soap mold or soap mold or soap maker or whatever it might be, pink soap mold, right? But for headline two and three, for your first ad, make it feature-based. So for headline number two and number three, make it very, very feature-based. And then for your second ad, make headline two and three benefits-based. So you have one ad that focuses more on the features. You have another ad that focuses more on the benefits. And then you could even have a third ad that kind of mixes the features and benefits like you see here. So ultimately, I recommend at least two ads, one highlighting the features of your product, the other highlighting the benefits, and then a third ad that kind of mixes the two or is just completely different. That's what I recommend um, across and basically it's going to help you identify and Google will kind of automatically can automatically swap out and find the best performing ad for you um, and ultimately generate better results right so it's kind of like uh, a b testing and f figure out which ad performs best okay so pretty much covered that um, after you create your headlines what you'll do uh, and I definitely recommend doing this it's a little hack that a lot of people overlook is you have the option to include a display URL okay so as you can see here we have example.com forward slash soap mold or it could be for, in this case, www.amazon.com. So if you have a link to your Amazon listing, right, then the URL is gonna say www.amazon.com. Uh, and it's just gonna be that, it's gonna be plain. But what you can do is if you're selling a soap mold, you can add a display URL that just adds basically some text after the URL, that's it. And what's the benefit of that? Again, you wanna be, your Google ad wants to match the, Google's, the Google user search query. So if someone's typing in soap mold, you wanna make sure that you have soap mold, you know, as many times in your Google ad within reason as possible. And this is another small way that you can do this. It's a little super simple hack. They can, they can have a little bit better results uh, for your Google ad because when someone sees that soap mold kind of at the end of the URL, that's gonna give them a little bit extra incentive to click because it's more relevant to their search query. Um, it really helps them know, okay, yeah, this, is, this, is, this ad talks about exactly what I'm looking for. So yes, I'm more likely to click, if that makes sense. So again, to, to make your display URL, um, just go to, go to the display path section and then you're going to see, you know, www.amazon.com forward slash, and then just have your main product keywords there. So in this case, it's soap dash mold. If it was soap maker, then soap dash maker, right? Um, really that simple. Just enter them in here and all that's going to do, it's not going to change your URL. It's going to change what your URL looks like, right? That's why it's called display URL. So it doesn't change or affect your URL at all, other than just the look of it on your Google ads. And the reason for this is it can ultimately Im improve conversions, all right? So display URL, really simple. And then lastly, guys, the last part of your Google ads um, to this point is your description, okay? The description um, is important. Not The headline is the most important, so make sure you spend the most time, effort, and energy on your headlines. But the description, of course, is still very important. Um, so again, go back to your list. You should have this huge list, features, benefits, your unique selling proposition, right? What makes you unique? What makes your product so special? Go to your list and just kind of take each thing from your list and insert it into your description uh, separated by period. So as an example, stunning soap creations under one minute, period. Premium quality, period. Or made in USA, period. Two day shipping, period. Easy to use. So just hammering as much as you can, whatever matters to your customer. Again, go into your customer's mind. They're on Google. They're searching for a product. What matters to them? Put that specifically into your description. Just hit them with it. I like to keep things much shorter. So it's much easier to read and quickly kind of glance at when someone's looking at the different Google search options. So again, stunning soap creations under a minute, premium quality, et cetera, right? A lot of options here. Um, here's some, you know, ideas for you. Just kind of give you some ideas. So you can pause and look at that, uh, but pretty straightforward. And then once you are finished, you have everything that you need. Go ahead. Don't hit save and continue. Click done and create next ad. Because you know, you've created the headline, the display URL. You've entered the URL and the description for your first ad. 
But then when you hit done and create next ad, then you can create another one or two ads. And like I said, have one, I recommend having one that's more feature based, one that's more benefits based, and then one that maybe mixes features and benefits together or is completely different and just something that you kind of come up with and are, and are creative with. Um, but you want to hit done and create next ad, go through the same process, create the next ad, done and create next ad, then you create ad number three. Now you have all, all three ads, you're good to go. Go ahead and hit save and continue, okay? And just to kind of visualize what this looks like, I'm sorry my head's kind of covering this, but you can have you know, your campaign like we created, one ad group, and then two ads or three ads per ad group. So this is just kind of visualizing um, the process. I'll have a link to my directly to my Google Slides or my um, presentation here in the description as well. Everything's going to be in the description, so be sure to just check there for everything. I'll, I'll include everything there um, so you can better see it. But you have campaign, then ad group, and then you could have multiple ads or one ad per ad group. This is just to purely help you visualize uh, and to be very, very specific. So we have one campaign, let's say, and then we have one ad group for soap mold and then another ad group for soap maker, okay? Then for our soap mold campaign, we have one ad highlighting the features of our soap mold. Then we have another separate ad highlighting the benefits of that soap mold. Then we go down to soap maker. We have one ad highlighting the features of soap maker and then another one highlighting the benefits of the soap maker. Again, for the ads, the features and benefits ads, they could be almost identical, but maybe you just slightly change the first headline and almost everything else is the same to where you know, your ads for your soap mold campaign have the word soap mold in the first headline. And then the only difference in the ads for the second ad group is you have soap maker instead of soap mold for the headline, right? Just you're trying to be as specific as possible. Uh, and hopefully this makes sense. I know I'm trying to cover a lot in a short period of time. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. And the final step is to track your Google advertising results. Now within the Google ads dashboard, once your ads begin running, you will see all kinds of data, including impressions, clicks, cost per click, your total cost per period, etc. But these are really all vanity metrics. Now, one of the benefits of running Google Ads to your website is you can install what's called uh, Google Tag Manager and actually uh, track your conversions on your website. Right? But with Amazon, unfortunately, we don't really have that ability. But that doesn't mean that we still can't track our results. Okay? Or that there's not ways of gauging our results. There are absolutely ways to track your Google Ad results, even with Amazon. And here are just a few options. You can use all of these or, or any one of these. And the first is promo redemptions. Again, if you have a promo code in your Google ad, that promotion extension, you call out a specific promo code um, in your Google ad, and you only have that promo code for your Google ads, then look at the number of times those promo codes were redeemed. And you can see, okay, here's how many sales were generated. And here's how much profit you know, per sale was generated in direct results. Um, but there's also the indirect results of, of keyword ranking, which I'll talk about in, in a second. Next is Amazon attribution. So if you're a brand registered, you may have access to um, Amazon attribution beta. I've been using this, but I found it at least right now, it's really glitchy and it's not accurate. So basically what you can do is if you're brand registered, if you have access to Amazon attribution, uh, the, their, their beta program, you can create a unique tracking link. So you basically take your link plug it into attribution, you can create a tracking link and then use that link in your Google ads. And then anytime you make a sale through your Google ads, Amazon's supposed to track it, but it's kind of glitchy right now, not really the best. So it's not accurate. I'm not really using it um, as much right now to track my results. However, this can absolutely, and I believe this will change in the future. And if it does, that would be a huge game changer. That would be huge. Um, so just keep an eye out on Amazon attribution. Um, if it becomes more uh, accurate, again, if anything kind of changes, You'll likely hear from me if you're in one of my uh, uh, courses on Skillshare or Udemy or in the Facebook group. I'll be making an announcement um, there, so you can go ahead and follow me there. And then number three, we have Zon Tracker. This is also brand new. So Zon Tracker, if you're not already familiar, is a tool by a guy named Yev Marsuko. Um, and originally, the tool was mainly designed to track um, Amazon ad sales from Facebook ads, or sorry, Amazon sales from Facebook ads. Now there's a beta version where apparently you can actually track Google ad sales. So this is brand new as of like two weeks or something like that as of the creation of this video. Um, but I imagine, you know, it, it's already a great tool for Amazon sellers who use Facebook ads to track their performance. Uh, and now they're expanding into Google ads. So this could be a really good option to look into as well and kind of give you some concrete definitive data on how your overall Google ads are performing. Um, so that's number three. These are all kind of three pretty solid options. Number four, and this is very important to keep in mind regardless, is your keyword ranking. Again, it's always great to just generate some more profitable sales through Google Ads. And if that's your ultimate goal, that's great. But what's also great, like we said before, that Amazon loves external traffic. So when you, send, when you get sales through Google Ads, 
um, this can very well help your keyword ranking, especially if you're using a some sort of ranking URL like Helium 10 Gems or with Pixel Find Me. Um, and if you're using one of those URLs and you're targeting very, very specific keywords, and you see that, you know, especially during launch, that you're increasing, you're getting sales and increasing rank for your keywords, and Google Ads is one of your only advertising or launch methods, there's really good uh, indication that your Google Ads are working. Uh, and again, for launch, I don't really care as much about sales. I mean, of course I care about sales, but I care about my keyword ranking um, and if those sales are generating keyword rank, really. So I care about both. But what's really important is keyword ranking for the keywords I want to rank for. Once I rank, I start generating organic Amazon sales. So even if my Google Ads are unprofitable, but they ultimately help me to reach rank and achieve rank for certain keywords. Um, and then I can generate organic Amazon sales and, you know, sustainably for years to come. That's very much worth my while. And again, um, I'll have, you know, I already have and will have uh, kind of videos about product launch strategy and budgeting for product launches and all of that, which is not covered in this video. But I definitely want to make sure you're tracking keyword ranking, which you can do with tools such as eGro. Um, Helium 10 also has this functionality. There's a lot of tools that have this functionality of basically you input certain keywords and then you track your rank over time for those keywords. And if you're using a two-step or a um, ranking URL with your Google ads for a very, very specific set of keywords and you're increasing rank for those very, very, very specific set of keywords, that's a really good sign. And then, you know, maybe at that point, you're like, I just want to use Google ads for launch. I'm now ranking. Great. I turn off my ads, right? It's depending on your objectives. There's a lot of ways to use it. And then lastly, um, you could also A-B test, which is, Fairly simple, uh, not as maybe accurate as some of these other methods to really know your exact results, but you can always have your Google ads running for a week, turn them off for a week, turn them on, turn them off and track your performance. It could be, you know, two weeks on, two weeks off, 30 days on, 30 days off. You can look at your unit session percentages in Amazon Seller Central, uh, basically the closest thing to your conversion rate. You can look at your sales for those periods and just kind of see, is it really helping or not? And you may see some pretty significant um, uh, impact and a pretty significant difference Right? You could also look at turn on, look at your keyword ranking, then turn off and then look at your keyword ranking, etc. Right? But you can basically A-B test. So these are all different ways of tracking results. Yes, it's not perfect, but um, it's absolutely doable. And I see a lot of Amazon sellers get tripped up about this, thinking that they can't track their results at all. There's absolutely ways of gauging success or not. You need to think about what is your goal. And then you can use these methods to see if Google Ads are achieving that goal or not. Even if it's not perfect, it's still um, it can still be really great. So... Uh, that's kind of in terms of tracking results. And then you can adjust your campaigns accordingly. Go back to Google Ads Manager. Um, you can increase or decrease bids, turn off ad groups or campaigns. Pretty straightforward. Target new keywords, whatever you want to do. And then lastly, right, that kind of summarizes or concludes our Google Ads video. If you would like to learn six other Amazon product launch secrets besides just Google Ads, I have a very affordable course about this on Skillshare and Udemy. I've taken all the product launch methods that I've successfully used not just used, but actually had success with measurable results with, and I break them out everything step-by-step step, um, on Udemy and Skillshare. A uh, link will be in the description as well if you're interested. Um, and for more free uh, tutorials like this, uh, be sure to subscribe. We have a brand new updated Pinterest ads tutorial as well coming out. Again, I'm going to be, my wife and I are launching uh, three brand new listings within the next week, uh, which we're really excited about. And we're going to be covering all of our results, what we did, how we did it, how much we spent, how much profit we generated, how long it took, everything. Breaking it down, really simple, um, results-based. That's what we're all about. And I'm going to be making a case study video about that and a whole host of other really exciting, awesome stuff, uh, expanding on a Shopify and all of that. So be sure to subscribe. If you liked the video, which I hope you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like to add, be sure to uh, let us know in the comment section. And as always, honestly, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos.